Welcome back, everyone. We're here for episode 50, 39, 25, something like that. Along the way, episode 30-something. We're going to talk about this past pay-per-view with Usman and Leon Edwards for the third time. The rematch of the rematch. And... I'm with my co-hosts, the new people on the team, Casual Chris. Yo, what's up, guys? Johnny Dubs. Hey, how we going? And we should be joined eventually by B. Woods. No relation to Johnny Dubs. And we're going to talk about this Usman and Leon Rematch of a rematch of a rematch of a rematch of a rematch. Wait a minute, man. that's too many, right? A trilogy, a trilogy match. But before that, we're gonna talk about the pay per view in general and the fights going on beforehand. So to get it started off, we're gonna talk about Jack Shore. I think this guy is gonna be a featherweight contender. Now he might not be. The number one contender, but I think he will be a contender at featherweight. What do you guys think? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think we'll have to see how it shakes out because it's a very competitive and deep division. You guys think that division's deep right now, or you think there's like you remember Outside how the of- welterweight division was at one point, where it's like top five wouldn't fight each other do you think the featherweight division is actually there because the top five is it it is deep arnold allen's currently number four and he's gonna fight max who's currently ranked number two that's only because yair is the interim right now but my boy jack shore i don't even know where he's ranked well it's monday right now it's monday rankings don't get updated till tuesday so yeah, but was he, he? None of them were ranked beforehand, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, what I'm looking at is like Josh Emmett's still at five. Josh Emmett or oh my boy, uh, Jack Josh Shore. Allen. Jack Shore is not ranked yet. But in my heart, and when I tell you, like, there's a fighter that's gonna do good. He's gonna be ranked soon. What fight is going to make him become ranked, you think? Probably uh, this fight should get him in the top 15, and then after that, we'll see what happens. But I think he's going to ascend, but I do... um, I'm 50-50 on where he lands after that. He's going to have to actually win some big fights and then go from there. But if you guys want to pass on the Jack Shore talk, we could talk about the pay-per-view main card. Because I see, I don't think you guys know who Jack Shore is. So we'll go with uh, Vittori versus Daladiz. Dalads? Dalads? Daladiz? You know, we, we're really bad on this pod of mispronouncing names. I don't even know if that's a word, but it sounds good, right? <laughs> sounds good enough. Vittori did what he had to do, right? Italian Stallion? Yeah, people were doubting him. They really counted him out. He showed us all wrong. Oh, showed all the haters wrong. That division's going to be a uh, stalemate right now, I feel. So you oh, the middleweight division? Yeah, middleweight division's going to be a stalemate right now. Because, I mean, okay, listen. If Stylebender wins, who fights him again? Who's the clear-cut number one contender besides him if he wins and gets back the title? You think they'll do a rematch? Shit, they might. I don't know. They should. I don't know. I'm not the UFC. They they 100% should. Unless, because unless he, one for one. Unless he goes in there and like starches uh Pereira. Yeah, yeah, that's his name. 
I, I, I couldn't think of his name, but yeah, that's his name, <laughs> Alex. Alex. If yeah. He, if, he, if he starts as Alex, then yeah. I mean, they might as well. It's, hey, it's one and one in the UFC. Bump all that other stuff. That those other two wins. That's not in the UFC. It's one and one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they could do yeah. a trilogy. It's not my fault that they fought like twice beforehand, right? Right, and it it makes it's sense. Important. And it's like, okay, he's got one, so they're doing like a, a trading back of the belts. So like the third one would be for all the money. But there's nobody in 185 that truly has a convincing argument to to why they should get a title shot, <laughs> unless Pereira wins again. Then you, right, so you yeah. got guys like uh, uh, the ones that Robert previously Whitaker, dude. exactly the guys that previously couldn't beat Stylebender, and it's probably going to be the same talks that we have later on when we talk about the welterweight title. About guys that couldn't, uh, that Kamaru was lapping, basically. He was lapping the vision almost. But it's going to be the same way. Like, if Stylebender wins the belt again, then we have the same argument. But we'll see in, what, two weeks? Three weeks? Something like that? Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. I believe the Ash and Knuckles crew is going to be watching that together. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be watching it together. Okay, so glossing over the middleweight fight, we got the flyweight bout, the women's flyweight bout with uh, Jennifer Maya and Casey O'Neill. Now, going into this fight, from what I was gathering, Casey O'Neill was supposed to walk through Jennifer Maya. But boy, oh boy, that was absolutely wrong. Jennifer Maya got some hands. And... I would have bet on it if I would have known this. It's just in general. I would have bet on it just in general. But I didn't want to make no bets. Because she was a slight underdog at a plus 140. And she put them things on fucking Casey O'Neill. Like Casey O'Neill couldn't do nothing. She was just getting boxed up the whole fight. Did you guys watch that one or no? I uh, saw part of it. Yeah, Jennifer Maya, she, 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 she won that fight, clearly. Hands to face, effectiveness, she won. Wasn't uh, Casey O'Neill on a, um, she was undefeated, right? I believe she was undefeated. She was the, uh, how can I put it? She was, um, you know, she was a European star on the rise, but it got stopped by Jennifer Maya. <laughs> Jenny from the block said, now player, this is what I do. <laughs> and now going into the middle of the card of the the main card, this man won performance of the night. Now this fight was good. Gunnar Nelson against Brian Barberina. Now don't get me wrong. Gunnar Nelson, yes, he looks like Derek Carr. That's aged horribly. And Brian Barberina, this man, he is a legend killer. He has fought all the legends just about at this division. And he's killing them. And you know this this guy, the reason why he's on the main card is because he's going to put on a show. He put on a show until, you know, what happens with Gunner. This is Conor McGregor's jiu-jitsu coach. One of them, at least. Besides, uh, besides, uh, what's his name? What's the dude that always talk all this trash on uh, the internet? Dylan, 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 Dylan. Dylan's the main coach, right? <laughs> or he was, or something. But Gunner, he's he's right there with him, ain't he? Or he was. Oh, I, something. I had no idea. He was yeah. training out there, or something. I swear to you. But then again, I could just be making up stuff that sounds good. And if I'm lying, I'm lying. I'm dying. Damn it. I might be dying. But either way, <laughs> this guy. I, I could have swore he was training with them, right? Fuck. I think so. This is what I, I think need. I read somewhere that he was training with Conor McGregor. I think I read that, but 
Can't be too sure. This is when I need Brian and Mark to like set me straight. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. This is when I need those those guys. I, I need B or Marky G to set me straight real quick with my rambling. Yeah, but besides that, I mean, it was. He finished that pretty quick, man. He finished it really quick. Yes, he did. He f- he put away Brian Barberino in the first round. And this guy's over here eliminating all the legends. He's trying to make his resume look pretty. Now, if he would have got Gunner, oh, man, he might have been off to the races somewhere. At least top 10. Top 10 at welterweight? Let me check. Uh, yeah. let me let me let me check these rankings real quick. Where is Gunner? Gunner's gotta be ranked, right? Right? No, mm, yeah. no, he not ranked. He not ranked. He not ranked at all. Nope. But we're gonna just pass them up real quick just because I feel what we should be talking about is the co-main event and the main event of this card that just passed us and with that said the fight of the night I could be like blind with no legs and tell you Justin Gaethje and Raphael Fazayev 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 Faziev, I don't know how you say it. Faziev? I think it's Faziev. Uh, Faziev, I don't know. I've seen this boy fight before against another Rafael named Dos Anjos. And it was a battle for the Rafaels. And it was banging. (laughs) So, let me tell you how I saw this fight. We're going to get to this one. Because this is a beautiful fight. Which... What you think, Chris? Because I I just want to hear... Did you think this was a good fight? Oh, it's... A banger from beginning to end. Just if you, if you like combos, this is the fight to watch because they're just throwing combos out the ass on each other. Okay, okay. And okay. Um, yeah, man, it's Gaethje got his first takedown in his UFC career. So okay, 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 okay. I was I was just I was just curious, John. Did you watch that fight? Yes. Uh... Did you like it? I don't need yes, I don't I need the whole thing. I still got I still got to lead off with it. Did did you like it? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let me tell you guys. Man, when I tell you I knew that boy Rafael was a killer, Jesus Christ. That first round, I was like, "Oh my god. This dude's about to be a contender for show." Yeah, he didn't win it, but damn. That first round proved, like, oh, shit. I don't know if Charles want that first round smoke. You know what I'm saying? Because Charles, he, he's only good for that first. Wait, wait. He's good after that. Let me let me rephrase that. Chandler. I don't know if Chandler want that first round smoke. Because this dude, God, dog. He was quick. Well, I'm telling you, he was swinging and banging. Jesus Christ. This dude's good. This this dude Faziev, his uh, actually, I can't really say that. I don't know how good his wrestling defense is because Justin Gaethje got a takedown. Am I right? Well, that was like a last minute takedown, though. Yeah. Am I right? Okay, so we all knew this fight should have been a banger, but this is the craziest part about this whole fight. The part I didn't know was how bad the damage. Fazayev, Fazayev took from Justin Gaethje. Gaethje looked like he was chilling, right? So he was ready for like four more rounds after that. And so Rafael's face looked like he got into like three car wrecks. You know what I'm saying? I got to ask a question. What's how up, John? hard does Charles? How hard does Charles Oliveira hit? Man, how, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Which Charles? One forty-five pound like, Charles or one fifty-five pound Charles? I mean, it didn't look like Gaethje was in trouble at all. Like he, like, yeah, he was getting beat up a bit, but he didn't look like he was like desperate, like he did in that Oliveira fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
which I was like, I was kind of shocked by. I was like, wow. Because once I saw him start pumping that jab, I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to win. Because uh, I, I see it because I have just didn't have an answer to it. What the craziest shit? Yeah, if Gaethje uses his jab, he's fucking champion, right? Oh, let's not get too high ahead of ourselves. Hey, if Gaethje uses his jab, he might be champion. Gaethje is the perennial uh, like gatekeeper for the division. I don't think he'll ever touch the gold. That's how you feel. I I sincerely believe that. So basically, if you beat Gaethje, you get in the title shot. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. Who does it. Gaethje have to beat to get a title shot? Nobody. Good question. Nobody. <laughs> uh, winner, winner of Benny and Oliveira. If that doesn't, if that's not a first contender elimination match, I think that's elimination. Oh that's no, 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 no. That fight, that fight no, in loser. general. That fight in general. I feel if if <laughs> no, no, it's more towards uh, if Benny wins, he gets a title shot. If Oliveira wins. It's different. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Damn, B's in, in the chat, but I don't know what's going on with him. You guys see him or no? I don't hear nothing. But no, I, I thought I heard him earlier, but I could be wrong. Like he He joined, but he's not in there. But okay, yeah. with the lightweight division yeah. in general, okay, this is this is what we're talking about right now. Since Faziev fell back one and Gaethje, basically he's gonna be in the same spot. How do you guys feel about him fighting Poirier a part two? And, Gaethje? And who do you feel wins that fight? Like, I love his hot Dustin. sauce, bro. That shit is good as hell. I got all Dustin three flavors. Dustin wins it? Why do you feel that? Handily. Ha- He's just a better fighter than... Um, Jesus Christ. Gigi. This fool said handily. Like, here you go. Here it is. I, I think the boxing is a little bit more crisp on uh, Dustin's side. Um... Maybe Gaethje will start using his uh, wrestling that we always keep hearing about. You know, we saw it for the last five seconds this past weekend. All right, now you guys are uh, turning into announcer mode on me and analyst and all that stuff. But no, I will get serious too. <clears throat> Let me clarify myself. No, I absolutely agree with both of you guys on the Chris boxing of Dustin Poirier compared to Justin Gaethje. But do I feel that Justin Gaethje has one hitter quitter power? Absolutely. And yes, I said that on here. One hitter quitter. Yes, I feel Justin Gaethje Ooh. could sleep him. Dustin Ooh. Poirier can do it too. Who has he slept? Justin Gaethje, yeah. He should have put away Tony Ferguson, but he was too stupid to not go away. And I love Tony Ferguson. That boy break dances. He's good in my book. But he put away some people. Like, look at his resume. He has put away some people. What do you mean? He, who has he put away? He almost put well, away yeah, Michael that, that, Chandler. Out power, though. It was, all, it was all TKOs, right? I mean, shit. That shit hurts. Ask Fazeev. He said that man hits hard. <laughs> it hurts. Look at his face. That's all I got to say. Yeah, that shit was bad. But that's that's that, okay. Let me let me let me let me rephrase everything. It's hard. Okay, okay, okay. You guys are talking about some stuff that's like on the Mount Rushmore of MMA. Like, okay, you had Anderson Silva sleeping people, right? Am I right? Who had a better run? Yeah. Who had a better run? Like, you look at all the greats that had their run. And was doing some crazy stuff and their highlights and of everything. Who right now is doing that? Literally, who, who, who? None of them. Nobody, right? Gage. Who? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I, I was just curious. Like, no, no, it's no disrespect to you guys. I'm just like curious. Like, from the time that I've been watching, like I've seen dudes come up and they win in either a lay and pray fashion or dominate them, even though it's boring. Like GSP, yeah, okay. But that man was a tactician with his effective strategies to win the fight it wasn't just him he was the uh he was the one putting it together but his, his coaches his camp his whole team put that together this is our strategy to win this fight and they won the fight what matters more winning or pleasing the fans pleasing the fans to be honest no, 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 no. You could please the fans all you want, but if you catch that L, it means nothing. Am I right? Yeah, you, well, you got to do it in the most entertaining way possible. Yes. But you got to be able to walk that line. Yes. Whereas, like, people say GSP was boring, but he at least brought his character. No, you so, like, saw him was... trying to win the fight, though. He wasn't just laying and praying. I'm just saying that just because. Yeah, unlike, you know, the Makachev. Volk fight where they're just holding position for what two three rounds okay but like i was saying like you got like all these greats then you got the anderson silva who just got inducted into the hall of fame thank you jesus he deserved it more than anybody first ballot what are, i don't know how it goes with the ufc <laughs> hall of fame but anderson silva definitely should have been in there he's definitely He's on my Mount Rushmore, and I don't care what anybody says. He's definitely up there. That man, his highlight reel of everything he did, I think he's got the most wins in the UFC, like winning streak or something. He's got some crazy record right now. But this dude, yeah, he, he on his title reign, if you went to decision with him, it was like a blessing in disguise. Like, literally. There was no way... You were surviving that unless your name was Chael Sun in the first fight. Talk about un, un, missed potential. Yeah, uh, Anderson is is was a very special fighter, as was GSP, and I think Usman was in that discussion until he got that KO and subsequent this loss. I think he's old age has gotten him. That's, that's getting ahead of ourselves. Alright guys, so where do you guys see in, uh, Justin Gaethje going next? We'll get off the uh, Mount Rushmore talk. We could do that another day for when we're all just deciding to just do one just to do one. You get what I'm saying? So, Justin Gaethje, he just won. So, like you guys said, Poirier, that's the only obvious answer, right? A rematch with Poirier. Poirier can't fight nobody else, right? Because then he'll be punching his way back. Because Chandler's tied up with Connor, who is he even ranked? Let me look. Let me look. Hold on. Let me look. Well, no, it's it's no, he's not. Connor's not even ranked. This is a celebrity UFC match. This is just to get the Ultimate Fighter ratings back up and this, that, and the other back going. We could always have him fight uh, Bobby Green for a title fight. I, 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 I stop that. We'll let B get settled in and get going. So I'd with say that, Gamrot, man. Yeah, wait, 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 oh, wait, wait. That, I'm just curious. That, I'm just curious. Do you guys see in... Who do you guys see in Connor actually being able to beat in the top five? So... Of the lightweight I or welterweight? Lightweight. I think oh, welterweight. I... I've, I really don't see Connor beating nobody in the top five of welterweight, even with, like, what, dude, what dude, you could shake up the whole welterweight rankings. He can't beat the top six. I don't see him beating oh. Shavkat either, and he's, he's number six. Though. What they're gonna try to do, and is if 
all things play out, because like this pay per view will do the biggest numbers of all time is Colby as a champ versus Connor, who just beat Chandler. He's going for triple C. He's going to try to be champ, champ, champ against uh, Maga Colby, and that that's just going to do two million buys. It's going to be insane. I think that's where they're trying to angle at. With the 170s? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I think that's like their their entire plan right there. Well, once you have... So so what you're saying is well, also Connor got the whole thing where uh what weight class are they fighting at? Or he he They're is felting fighting. at one seventy. He's he's gonna fight at one seventy. Correct. And then Chandler are gonna fight at one seventy? Mm-hmm. Hmm. So uh, it's just like it's same as the the DS fight. There, so Okay, 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 okay. Now, do you see this is what I was getting at. I don't see I don't see Connor losing to Shavkat. Do you guys see that? No? You see him losing or not losing to Shavkat? I don't see Connor beating Shavkat. Mm. Let, oh, me re- God, no. let me rephrase that. No, no. Like I said, the only person he might be able to beat at 170 is Gilbert Burns. If he lands yeah. one. But he's just a bigger lightweight. Yeah, that's exactly. Really what that's what I'm saying. That's like all these other dudes, they're all 17 years. What 155, I really don't see him losing unless he lands one. But that's given. Anybody can land a shot at 155. Like Chandler, I, that's the only way he beats him. Darius, <clears throat> only way he beats him. Gaethje, only way he beats him. But uh, uh, Gaethje might just walk through it. He might be fucking juggernaut and said unstoppable and run through all that shit. Poirier, we done seen what happens when he fights Poirier. That boy gets a free bottle of uh, some Irish whiskey off Connor when he fights Poirier. <laughs> this is besides the first one when he had the low cut. You know what I'm saying? Charles Oliveira. Yeah. It depends, depends what, what Charles we get. Yeah, it depends what Charles we get. If we get the 145 Charles, that Charles is no bueno. But we get the 155 killer Charles, we might have something. And Islam, <laughs> man, man. What's Islam going to do? What Islam wants to do is fight Leon Edwards for some odd reason. Yeah. And I don't that know. That was Ali talking. That wasn't actual. <laughs> what I don't know, but we got Brian back on the show right now. He ran away. I don't know where he went, but we got <laughs> B Woods in here with J Woods. Let's bring him on. What's up, B? Where you at? You muted, bro. You muted. You muted. Whatever you're saying is unheard right now. There you go. There, there you go. go. There go my boy B. What's up, yeah, B? Yeah. What's up, man? I'm I'm back, baby. We was just about to allude to the welterweight championship. I, I, I heard someone. I heard some of the conversation. Um, I heard the. I was I was wanting to get into that Justin Gaethje, off the off his eye of fight. Damn. Oh, you want to go there? You want to go there? Oh, what a what a banger! Man, dude, Raphael, that boy's fast. Like, I had to pronounce all the syllables in that fast with a T. Not just fast, you know, like F-A-S-S-S. I'm talking about fast with a T. Put some, put some accents on yes, those. that dude the is fast. He got power, too, but God, <laughs> dog, Justin Gaethje, man. Now, the fight, I want to see Fazayev, Fazayev, whatever he's in. Oh, my God. Rafael. Yeah, Rafael. He, he, he done took the Rafael title off of RDA. 
He said, I am Raphael now. Come on, man. Come I'm, on, man. I'm wearing don't the red do, bandana. Don't do, don't do like that. Yo, yo, he did it. He put him away. He put him away. Hey, man, hey. hold on. Wait, first of all, hold on. Put some respect on Dos Anjos' name. This man. man was a former champion. He's achieved the highest rank spot to who's who. You can't just take the name with Buzz. No, basically, Raphael has to have his name said with a silent R now. Oh, Raphael. He got to be called Man. Raphael. He's no longer Raphael. He's Raphael. That's what happens when you lose. <laughs> when you lose a name battle, you get you a silent. You get a silent letter in front of your name now. Kind of like knife with a K. That boy is he's Raphael now. So it, I, I see a current trend going on in MMA, especially <clears throat> in MMA media. Like every time a guy who has accomplishments like skins on the wall, every time they lose to a young hungry lion, they just get disrespected and thrown to the wayside. We're already talking about Kamaru as if he was like some fucking scrub. No, 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 no. Who, who we have yet to talk about Kamaru. No, not not we as a group. I mean, just if you look at media, dismissing them as if like he's just trash, a washed. Yeah, well, well, he washed. Trash. They're saying he washed. Well, like, he did look pretty bad in the last fight, and he, he is looked bad. Old. Amazing compared to, Amazing. compared to previous outings, he oh. was not like he was not looking good. Oh, John, Amazing. I can't wait till we get into this segment. I Amazing. cannot wait till we get into this segment. Those takedowns? Those I cannot takedowns. wait till we get into this segment, John. Yeah, I, this, this, is what, this, is what, this is what blows my mind. If he looked bad, right, if, what looks good? <laughs> what looks good? Like, because I'm, I'm all these guys that are being praised that are these up-and-comer guys like Shavkat, guys like who. I'm not sure how Kobe is about to get his fifth title shot. Exactly. I, I played, <laughs> We're going to get poker, into that. I played poker with Kobe <laughs> two months ago. This dude was like sitting there chill. He hadn't fought in a year. So, and this, all he's done is lost. No, no, no. He beat, he beat, uh, he he beat Jorge. Against Jorge. Top, Jorge. Top. No, no. Against top. Com- let's, not, let's not be silly here. Act like if you if you want if you want to if we want to be silly okay we can do that all right cool sure he beat a, he beat the world beater of Jorge Masvidal who got like nineteen losses so we're gonna say that he's got this guy's legitimate champion I get pay per view I understand entertainment I understand um, ticket sales all that stuff that's all well and good if we're talking about performance inside of the octagon. What have we seen from Kamaru to believe that he's not still one of the best fighters in the world? Other than the fact that Leon and his team seem to have solved him, have solved Kamaru Usman's game plan. That's the only thing I saw from that last fight. It's Kamaru, it wasn't like he was getting completely dominated. He just got outclassed in kickboxing, which is Leon's strong suit. And Leon was able to nullify the grappler. He, now, his means of nullifying the grappling might be a little controversial because he did grab the fence a ton and inside yeah. the glove a ton. However, that's not what people are going to remember. They're only going to remember that L next to your name, that unanimous decision win. They don't remember the tactics that took to get there. Um, I, I didn't see a decline in Kamaru. I saw more of... Leon being able to put with him, Leon being able to put his skill set on display, and even though to the trained eye you can see all the little tactics he used to to keep fight standing with the with the with the, 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 the he got a point taken away and still won a UD. Think about that. He got a point taken away in the middle. Was it the second round? Was it the middle of the second round? They took the point away. The third, the third round. I know it's it's like in, right in the middle, right, right in the heat of the fight. It was like either late second or early third. The referee took away a point, and in a decision, that's usually detrimental in a title fight. However, he was able to still win this fight convincingly. Um, and it wasn't as if like watching this fight 
he ran Kamaru over. No, he, I wouldn't say that. I thought Kamaru looked good. He just couldn't implement his game plan. And Leon could. Leon was landing some nice straight shots in this kickbox. And he, um, I guess apparently Kamaru doesn't believe in checking leg kicks. He, he don't do that. Um, and it was just a good, it was a, it was an overall good fight for Leon. Now, moving forward, they're talking about booking Kobe versus Leon. And I'll let y'all go off and talk, we'll talk about that a little bit. How is my question? How is Kobe in line for a title shot? And I can understand if you want to skip over Bully B. I'm not done. I understand that. Who else is there? I'm not done. I can, I can understand if you want to skip over Bully B. I can understand if you want to say, because um, so in my opinion, the only guys that are active that are available for any kind of title shot would be La Muhammad, and you can ask track Shavkat. I'm but not done. Say, I'm not that's done. the whole point. I'm not done. Harry up. Definitely not on, done. I'm, I'm I'm not done over the. Uh, how can I put it this way? Leon did what he could get away with in the fight to win that fight. Given he didn't get taken down as much as we all thought he would. So he was doing some he... some questionable things. He he landed multiple nut shots. Am I right? Or am I wrong? Multiple. Not wrong. Right? Not grabs. wrong. He had, fence grabs. Yeah. grabs. He had a fence grab that he got a point taken away. He His fingers was in the gloves. Yeah. I'm not saying um, I'm not saying he, he didn't deserve the win. He was clearly the better sportsman on that night. He won that fight from points and what he does. He he clearly did everything. Usman did not check nothing. Usman, the only way he checked the kick was getting kicked well, in the nuts. And as we know, his, his legs are severely compromised. His knees are fucked. His so knees I think that are was fucked. Playing. But that's why he checked the the leg kicks with his nuts? Is that what you're telling me? You know, I, <laughs> what I'm saying is that, that was like one of the th- main things that like really hurt him was not being able to check anything. I feel... Uh, was, Leon might have the blueprint to be dominant against Kamaru. You get what I'm saying? Plus, I feel Kamaru had that, like, oh, headshot, kill, whatever whatever that thing is. Well, in it, the back of his mind. Styles make fights, right? Exactly. Like, it doesn't work. Whereas, so who else would you put in there? So, right now, Shot Nobody Pat right now. Having to fight. Nobody right heavy. now because I'm about to go forward with this. Right. Hey, wait, wait, wait! Before before we go to the matchups of next, I definitely want to address one thing about going back to Kamaru and Leon matchup. Now, <clears throat> I, every fight that they've had, at three they they matched up three times: once early in their career, and then twice recently for titles. Right? Um, the first matchup was very close between Leon and. Um, Kamaru and Kamaru got the edge in the decision victory. Then the next time they met up was for the championship, where by all accounts, Kamaru had that fight in the bag until <coughs> famous headshot dead. Goodbye to your pound for pound. There is no pound for pound. Look at me now. Leon, Leon Edwards landed the head kick. Some might say it's lucky. I'm not one of those some. You don't get lucky and land a head kick. You can't just throw your leg up high and hope that it lands. You gotta set it up, and he did exactly that. So that was a great execution of um, landing that head kick and putting Kamaru to sleep. On the third fight, it was more of Kamaru's game plan, which is completely nullified by by uh, Leon's tactics. We would say Leon did display some be- better. Um, Grappling defense against the cage, but he also used some some home cooking in London. Not, you know, it. I'm not sure how they didn't just. It, it, there was so many instances where he just grabbed the fence or grabbed the glove, kicked him in the nuts. He pulled out all the stops when it comes to like straight up. Oops, 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 oops. When it comes to like 
getting dirty in there. It's like, to me, and this is why I said, I said this once before, I think every time a foul occurs, there should be a point. There should be no accidental. You're a professional. There's no accidental kick to the nuts. There's no accidental eye poke. Close your fingers. Don't grab the cage. Do, like, you grab the cage, that's automatic to me. Um, if you're going to give that leniency, then you can game the system and be able to Im and implement some fouls and give yourself an edge. It, it, like, you know, like... It, in these fights, one moment can change the fight. One small moment, like one takedown here. So I have a question. You know what I mean? Of the fight. So, like, if you allow a guy to stand, I mean, to, to commit these fouls, then they have a shot at um, taking over a fight without without penalty. And why not go for it? Right. If, you, if you're fighting for a title, why not go for that eye poke? It's the first one's free. If his, so, eyes like if his eyes compromise, then you got a great, you got a, you know, you got a good shot of taking that, taking that title. So I have a question. Do you think the the point deduction? Would you rather have that and reset to standing, or would you rather make him go back in position, but he doesn't lose a point? It's good. You asking? Um, you said you said if one more time. Would, if, so you, if, 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 if you were in the position like where, the, where you're where you're calling the, the, the pin scrap, are you? Would you rather him lose the point and be stuck stood back up, or would you rather him like not take any points, but they they get back in the position and he has to like work his way up again? Because uh, I think they should I, lose a point neither. and go back to the position. That part. Yeah, I I I, I, I think that should be the way of it, but. It's the like in an either or situation. Which is which would you prefer? Um, I w um, I don't I don't think it's if I'm gonna if I'm gonna play the either or game, I would take the point and then have them continue um, as standing. But I don't think that's right. And then again, you're you're still um, you're getting out of the compromised position. Because imagine, think about it this way: Let's say, for instance, a guy gets you in a full mount. What's to stop you from just like twisting his dick and then getting up? Like you, like I, I take the point, but now I'm up. I, I use yeah. the old dick twist. I'm, I'm minus one point on the scorecards, but we're now we're, we're returned to standing. But you know, like you said about the eye gouge, like mm -hmm. Leon has already eye gouged a guy before, and he got a no contest. So I mean, he, he is kind of a dirty fighter. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I was that eye gouge. The eye gouge against Bilal was different. He was kicking Bilal's ass up until that eye gouge. It wasn't as if he was he bailed himself out of a beating by I, by eye gouging Bilal. We have this weird rule in current UFC landscape where we're allowing guys to gauge distance with their fingers, and you see it like across the sport. You can't watch one card where you don't see an eye poke. Does that mean the entire roster is dirty, or is this a part? It's built into the sport where you know. Get, you're not gonna get punished for it. It's kind of like um, if you look at other sports, you can get away with certain things within the rules, like NBA players flopping or NFL players with defensive holding. Or you know, if the you can get away with so much before you get called or you get penalized in a real way. That's why I think it should be automatic. There's no warnings. You know the rules. There should be no warnings. You extend your hand, your fingers out. You risk. You can do it. No one's going to stop you. But if you happen to make eye contact with their eyes, it's an automatic point. Well, do I think Leon's a dirty fighter? Uh, not really. I mean, I don't think he's like looking, set, setting out to poke people in the eyes to get an advantage. Um, I don't know. I would have to play God to believe that that I, I can get inside of his mind and think know what he's thinking. However, um, they're they're playing within the rule set. And the rule set allows for a freebie. Still there, John? Yeah. John, did you did you did you watch um did you watch that? Obviously we this main event, we're covering that right now. We're talking about um, Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman three. Did what you think? What were your thoughts on the, the fight in its entirety? Did you think it was um 
as advertised, or did you see decline in Kamaru's skills? I think a lot, a lot I, of people were. I definitely think that he has a decline. Like it. So the Usman, like prime Usman, I'm thinking when he fought Kobe the first time. Like that's when he really worked his uh, striking and wrestling together, and he really became a like tour de force in this, the the division. Um, that, but like, and then you, he just ran through everyone else after that. Um, but. This fight, he, he did not look good uh, in acting his, like, so when he, when, uh, a few of the times when he shot, he really didn't try to, like, uh, force the position. And uh, his legs were clearly, like, bothering him because he, he was, uh, like, trying to get the takedown with his upper body. He wasn't really, um, like, trying to drag him down using his legs as well. So that's why I was, like, kind of worried, uh, uh, like, uh, about him early on, I was like, "Is he all right?" Because he he just didn't look a hundred percent to me, um, and just some of the movement, like you, it just I don't know. That's not to say he's washed or anything, but uh, I I do think uh, there is some decline, and we have heard multiple stories about his uh, implant injuries and other stuff in training, so. I, and the way uh, Whitman was talking to him at certain points, it seemed like something. I think there's more to the story than uh, Usman just lost to. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. I, so I, I will say this: I did. I agree that I think that a, a little bit of it, a, a, a portion of this, will be attributed to Kamaro losing a bit of a step. I, I can see that because. We all know his knees has been compromised since the Woodley fight. The, the first Woodley title fight. He couldn't, he couldn't even run. Like his knees are basically um, bone on bone type situation. Like So he can't really, like he's talking about walking down stairs. He can't even walk upstairs. Yeah, he's so, walk uh, backwards. Backwards, correct. Like his knees have always been that way. However, one thing that has been undeniable is his ability to Form at a high level in title fights. He's not losing cardio because of his lack of uh, knee mobility. Um, and no, no one, even cardio king himself, Kobe, in he had what two tries? Kobe's uh, fought twice um, against Kamara. He wasn't able to exploit that. Leon was able to do it on first shot, the title. Um, and it may, you said something earlier that makes the most sense, where it's like matchups make fights like their styles make fights more up uh, leon is smooth he's a very smooth striker once he gets into the flow of it because at first he is a little tentative he's very very like cautious laid back he seems to be the kind of guy who makes reads he tries to figure out like where can i implement the skills and then once he figures that out he can land some damage he um and he did it against kamaru late but for the most part he spent most of the fight pedaling on Kamaru's pressure. I don't know if Kamaru is done. But I will say this. I think that he might not have many fights left in them. Like, I, I, like <clears throat> given the fact that his knees have been... They're already degraded. Plus, he's getting older. Nobody beats the clock. Yeah. Clock undefeated. So, what's... I, what's I, his, I, what do you think is next for Kamaru? The title. What do you think is next for Kamaru? If he doesn't get back to the title... Um, what's what what gets him out of the door? Like so, if he, if we just said we just went through the rankings, right? And we plowed through the top four, we could even find another title shot, title contender in that four. We had to go. We had to dig down to Obi Covington, who hasn't fought in a year, who's been inactive and radio silent for a year. And the next guy that even deserved that isn't even remotely close is Bilal Muhammad, who. You say remember the name. It seems like the whole company forgot the name. Oh. And then we got, and then we got, uh, and then after that, we talking about Shavkat, who's a a guy who's an ascending fighter, excellent fighter, undefeated. But again, um, he's ranked number six. So, what's next for Kamaru? I think what's next for Kamaru is the uh, the loser of Bilal versus um, Shavkat, if that happens. 
Well, that, that's not even booked yet, though. I mean, they're talking about it. I mean, we I haven't seen anything in officially of having Shavkat versus Bilal Muhammad. I've seen well, I've seen nothing. So, you know, Dana never makes fights after a big event. Bullshit, so he doesn't. <laughs> He never really gives me solid, like he's always wishy-washy, but he, the fact that he's so adamant about this makes me think that there's some politicking going on, that there's something behind this, like, this is all done in behind closed doors. Man, he, he called the Kobe Covington versus uh, Leon Edwards fight next on Saturday. Don't make fights on a Saturday, right? He did. Yeah. He really did. Yeah. 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 He literally yeah, said, man. Kobe's well, that next. He's like, that, he's trying to get an agreement that, that out of Kobe. Man, right? So, one of the theories I'm hearing is in exchange for dropping the charges against Jorge and mm-hmm. making sure that legal stat wasn't going through everything, that Kobe got the, all right, you're getting the next title challenge, regard, like, period. Because, you know, people are saying, what about the winner of Burns? And Dana was hammering home, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. So, and they're trying to do that ESPN deal right now in air right. rights. That's one of the things so, like, hey, man, if if you don't press charges, you get a next title shot. Come on, man. Yeah. That's something. But if Colby wasn't as high ranked and, and it, you know, if he was like someone low down and he didn't just 50-44 Jorge, the guy that Leon's trying to fight. So, like, and let's not forget, Leon... Uh, I poked Bilal and beat Nate Diaz and had about a year and a half, two years of inactivity. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, not, wait, not minute. Equal, wait a minute, wait a minute. Inacti- wait, Leon's inactivity was due to a global pandemic, not because he wanted to play poker tournaments in Miami. Are you telling me, you're telling me that Leon beat Nate, Nate Diaz? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> According to the records. On paper, right? Yeah. Oh, 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 I know that. I know that. Oh, well, okay. So <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Like, I'm just Le- joking. Leon, Leon. Okay, I, he's, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not campaigning for Leon right now. But here's the. Here's that the, boy, good though. He good. He he's good. He's, he, he, he good. hasn't lost a fight. He hasn't lost a fight since Nate Diaz. The last. Well, the last. <laughs> though, last. He, he lost a meme battle against Nate. He lost a Twitter battle against Nate. He lost he beat, a last minute he beat the last against Nate. Nate Diaz. He beat, Nate Diaz he, had one he beat the brakes Nate off Diaz of had, Nate Diaz had one moment. At, <laughs> he had one moment at greatness of beating the actual top contender, and he decided to point and laugh. That, hey, sums, up hey, Nate, hey. that sums up Nate Diaz's entire career. That That's the at streets. Nate, <laughs> Nate won it in the streets. I guess. Like, yes, in the mean, streets. Man. You mean what in the streets? The Diaz brothers don't lose. They just run out of time. Exactly. Yeah, they run out of time. Yeah, if they had more time, they'd bleed out. Then die. But uh, <laughs> we, we, they, we had they our first MMA it. death. And our first MMA death. No, like no, no. Le- said, Leon. In the in words, in words of Scarface, man, fuck the Diaz brothers. Hey, Leon's um, good, though. <laughs> Leon's good, though. Him against Kobe should be a very intriguing matchup due to the fact that. Kobe this, this, no, 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 no. This fight was at sea level, right? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. right? Was it, it was in, was it, on, it's yeah, right. was it London, yeah. right? I'm it's just saying. I'm just saying. Like yeah. It was at sea level, so these guys should have no reason to be gassed. Right. And that's the thing. Leon and Usman were looking pretty gassed around five, four and five. So... How does that translate to Colby's you know, king of stamina? Colby's a cardio, cardio machine, man. Yeah, but he trains at below sea level, too. Well, um, what's his face? Uh, Henry Cejudo was saying after Leon like, beat uh, Usman, he's like, well, there you have it. Colby's your next champion. So take that for what you will, but Cejudo's Analysis is interesting, to say the least. Well, all I will say is 
Leon did his thing. He yeah, I, I by hook or by crook, he beat him. He defended the title well. Helped having some uh, hometown judges on the figure on the scale. But I will not say oh. that Kobe has an easy fight against Leon at all. Because if he can do what he did against Kobe with the non-takedown uh, attack, like if he never gets taken down, Kobe Covington has a long night ahead of him. Yeah, yep. he might pressure him and do all this other stuff, but I like Leon Edwards with a knockout, maybe, on Kobe Covington if he can keep it going and standing up. And if Kamaru think, can take him down, then shit. I don't think Kobe can. I think this is Kobe's best chance at getting the title. I, I, I think Kobe won. I agree I with you. I agree with you. I agree with John because because of the way Leon fights, like breaking down this matchup, I think this is probably the easiest path to the, the UFC strap, the actual UFC strap for Kobe. Because Leon is a counter fighter and he's going to go up against a pressure fighter. And in the eyes of the judges, the pressure fighter has the edge. Leon, will so have to, Leon has to knock Kobe out um, the- in, order to get a, in order to get a clear victory. Kobe can win in so many other ways in this fight in five rounds. So I'm thinking of like the Marie uh, Jan fight. Like that's what Kobe is just gonna put the pace on him, and that's gonna look better to the judges. Right. Now, can Leon? <clears throat> Leon, can he formulate a game plan to nullify it and be able to land strikes? Because he go- he's gonna have the reach advantage. He's gonna be able to um, in his. I think his kickboxing is better overall than Kobe's. Kobe's more of a volume type striker. He's not really yeah. precise. He's not trying to land shots to knock you out of there. He's basically volume, volume, pressure, pressure, break you cardio with your with his cardio. Like threaten the wrestling, threat put you against the cage. That kind of style is taxing to the other fighter on their back foot. And Leon has shown that he can kind of fall into a like a defensive shell yeah c- competing against that he showed it in the first the first um Kamaru fight it took he his coach bullied. it took correct it took his coach to like come on man do you want this man <laughs> like he had to really rally him to get don't him. let him bully you son let him bully your son like and if, if Kamaru was able to do that that's kobe's ace you know that's, that's what kobe's best known for so mm-hmm. if, if Kamaru can do it um Kobe has a shot at doing it. The only threat, the only difference is Kamaru has the power to knock you out. And yeah, a, and Kobe has blow hands. Right, and that, that's a much different dynamic. Like, <laughs> if, you, if you're talking about trading shots with a high-level kickboxer, they would prefer to go against a guy who's a point striker. Because they know, like, if we're trading shots, my head kicks compared to your, whatever you're throwing at me, I'll trade that. That's a good trade for me. That's a positive trade for me. However, I don't know if... Leon's w- willing to engage in a firefight. He seems to be more defensively inclined and more um, geared toward being a counter striker. So I think right. this fight, on on paper, this fight is a good matchup, and everything Leon's saying confirms that to me. Because Leon does not seem to want this fight. Yeah, he, was, he is trying everything possible to get out of it. I I think in his mind, two years ago, he wanted to fight Kobe. Kobe wanted no part of Leon. At that point, I would assume he was already training uh, with, Kobe, with Kobe Covington in mind and having like, you know, because when, you, when you're looking up at the division, you, you're, you're preparing for the guys who are up there. With Kobe being inactive, he's off the radar. If Kobe was inactive for an entire calendar year, he's off the radar. We don't even know if he's going to fight again. And some fighters might have like just completely rolled him off. And now that he suddenly pops up, now he probably didn't have, he's not ready for that kind of fight. So that's why right. he's like, in everything he's saying, all the interviews I heard with Leon, he's saying that he doesn't even want to make that fight happen. Yeah, he's, he's trying everything single, like, excuse in the book. <laughs> and the fact that he's even mentioning wanting to fight Jorge over Colby and saying that Colby doesn't deserve it, but if Jorge wins, they, they need to make that fight. 
Well, I think hey. I think I think that's that's more attributed to Leon's want to fight Jorge Masvidal for six years. He's been trying to get a, a, a Masvidal fight forever. Masvidal, when Masvidal was on top and fighting for the title, he fought Kamaru twice, lost twice. Masvidal was a name. He had buzz. Everybody in their mama was trying to get that fight, including Leon, who was trying to get revenge for that three piece in the soda on his home soil. That's the, I think that's the motivation behind that and the dollar signs. As you know, that's a, that's an automatic sell. You can just replay the whole two piece in the soda thing in the media start a uh, build up. You already have a built in storyline. You have a guy who's a star in a sport who's this notified, this you know this gangster type character versus Leon who can play the good guy champion character. You well, only have a you built have in story. Same with thing with Kobe though. Like, but you have but Kobe. We don't have any. Well, you, you do. Can you, you, Kobe obviously can play the bad guy role to a T from a WWF standpoint on a mic like Chael can. However, Kobe is the one who got assaulted by Jorge. Jorge has the street cred. And backs it up. Allegedly, right? Like allegedly, and, like Jorge is the kind of guy who will pull up and hit you in the mouth. Leon knows this for sure. Kobe knows this for sure. So <laughs> this this isn't this isn't a matter of speculation of what I might say I'll do to you. This is what you know I'll do. And I think mm-hmm. Leon wants that fight because he want he wants to beat him. He wants to have the opportunity to show him up in a cage. I think that's the whole motivation behind the Jorge. I don't think it has anything to do with the rankings. He he he's been wanting this fight for a long time. And Jorge, every single time Jorge was on top, denied it. He didn't want that fight. Now that Jorge, now that he's on top, of course Jorge was going to take the fight now because it's for a title. I mean, like, you can't pass up on a title opp- opportunity. That's a big opportunity. Jorge got and, one in his next fight, though. And his next fight is against um, another guy who deserves a, to be... Cons- Come on, like, his stock didn't decline from the Hamzat loss. No, hell Same no. Same way as Jeff Neal's. No, he rose up. Right. If anything. Gilbert Burns, if Gilbert Burns comes out there and put, goes goes down to Miami and knocks Jorge out... Oh, we, we what, all what, fucked what, what with this go? shit. We fucked with go? all this shit. That Did whole get Kamaru too? Is crazy. Does he get Kamaru? Do we get Kamaru versus Burns too for the title Maybe. Eliminator? Maybe. Or do we get something or, crazy? Or do we? Oh, yeah. We might get Chamaya Burns too. You never know. Hamza miss weight. I don't think. I don't think Hazma is fighting at uh, <laughs> 170 no more though. I really don't. What division is he even in anymore? Like I don't know what division he fights in. He's a 185 right now. Officially, he's in the same boat. Right now, in the matchmakers' minds, he's in the same boat as Paulo Costa. Where they, they don't want him to try to cut weight to make 85. They would prefer mm-hmm. him to go up. And then Maev is like, yeah, he's a natural. He's more of a natural 185-er. And when he cuts down, he's a huge 170. But can he make the championship weight? Any? That's a question because he hasn't had to yet. Well, he, he well, Kobe. What Kobe said is they were offered, but he, him fucking up like ruined his entire career trajectory because it it wasn't just a nine pound mate list. It was a nine pound weight list when you're heading the headliner and you had to scramble last minute to change every single thing with that entire card just to make it work. So that's a huge colossal fuck up. Sure, and got bumped down from the main event to the co. And as much shit as I give Kobe for his um, antics of like not, not fighting, no, no, I love his. I love his character. Uh, the, the, the shit talking Kobe, I love it. I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm here great. for it. The only thing I don't like is the ducking. Kobe does find a way to duck top comp until like if you look at his his list of wins. What are we talking about here? We're talking about a washed Woodley. Woodley wasn't near the title contender he was when Kobe finally got the matchup. He already gotten beaten by the who's who. Was on his way out of the sport. Okay, that's Kobe's this win in his um, top five wins. He lost twice to Kamaru, and then he beat an old Dos Anjos, right? 
And who else do we have? Like, give me a notable win. Jorge. And, and, and you know how I feel about Jorge Masvidal. I think Jorge Masvidal has the, the buzz of a top contender, but no, he's not. He's not a top contender. Not to discredit Jorge. It's more of just a, a fact. Do you, do you think Jorge Masvidal against anybody in the top five is a favorite? To be fair, though, people thought that last Colby Usman fight was very close. Some say we're in the league. So I can understand like that aspect of it. And also there's there's not really anyone that you can just slot in right now. Um, no, and I, I agree. And that's this is why I believe here's my I'll make my claim for Kobe as taking for the title shot. This is my claim I'll make. You look down the list, Burns had Burns has a date book. Or he has a date book. Right? And and Kobe's number two. I don't know how he's number two after being inactive when the actual champion in other divisions were stripped immediately. Immediately when they weren't available. You don't gloss over that though. I'm gonna gloss over well, that still. I'm gonna gloss over that and, I'm gonna gloss over that and still make the case for Kobe. You look further down the line and we don't have anyone else outside of Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad is taking every fight that was available to him. And has shown and proved like the the fact that he dismantled the, the hype train of a, Sean was Sean Brady, is Bradley or Brayley? Brady? Brady, Brady, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he Sean he looked Brady. impressive against he looked impressive against Brady, and he took that fight when not many were willing to. So he, he's the only guy at all that has the activity and the wins. To say that, all right, I'm, I'm in line for this thing. We know this is this is more than just. I know why they're fighting. It's more than a competition. This is more. This is this is entertainment too, and Kobe does provide that entertainment. There's no one, as far as entertainment value, Kobe's undeniable. I know where they're fighting. He, he's undeniable as far as like getting that title shot. And for me, I'm, the me making a case for Kobe, I'll say this: I think Kobe is the biggest matchup threat to Leon right now. Like, as far as dethroning Leon, I think he beats Bal- Bilal handedly, personally speaking. I think he beats Bilal handedly. Um, and I don't think Shavkat's ready. After watching Shavkat versus Burns, I'm not, I, don't, I don't think he's ready Jeff for the top guy. Jeff the top. I don't think he's ready for five. I don't think he's ready for five rounds against the highest level up in the division. No, no, no. Um, so, like, will he be in the future? I think he has all, all the potential in the world. Shavkat does. However, right now, if you if you put him against in Kamaru, I think Kamaru has the big edge, in my opinion. I would like to see it, but I think Kamaru would have the edge. So Kobe, we, we, we went through all these guys. We mentioned four names, and that's the whole top five, with Shavkat being number six. Kobe's the guy, in my mind, who should get the title shot. So this is my only beef with Kobe getting it is the inactivity, and not seeing the top contenders as as the guys that I mentioned before, like uh, Shavkat and um, more importantly, Bilal has. That's the only beef I have with it. Other than that, like I, I'm all for it. I would love to see a matchup with Kobe versus Leon Edwards for the title shot. Oh. You guys well, ready? You guys ready? You guys ready? I know why Kobe is What's fighting it? Leon. I know why. You guys ready to hear it? Right. No, no, no. Bring it. It's not even funny. It's legit serious. <clears throat> International Fight Week. Who do we have representing the United States of America? Exactly. Stipe? No, 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 no. Stipe, no, Stipe, Stipe <laughs> saying he needs more time. And here's the thing. Like, like, so Stipe came on the aerial show and said that he's going to fuck John Jones up, basically. He made the statement of like I. If that fight happens, it happens. Oh, he's Stipe has admitted that he wants to fight. However, it's never been made official in two years. International so, Fight Week. We're gonna have Kobe Covington representing the United States of America against Leon Edwards representing the United Kingdom. That might I, end uh, up being the main event. That might end up being the main event if John Jones and Stipe doesn't get finalized. I don't think. But what about what about Jamal Hill versus Yuri Prohaska? 
if you will ready? he be ready? That's a question. That's a big we're, international fight week is in months. July, we got yeah, like four a, months. Yeah, we got like yeah, we got it's four months. months. Is he, is he going to be ready for that? <clears throat> ready for a, is he going to be ready for after having a long layoff, come back and fight a title fight against really tough matchup in Jamal Hill in a few months? Maybe, maybe, but that's definitely not something I would bank on. Obi's ready now. That's, he made Kobe made t- Kobe made championship weight. A week in a single days. <laughs> were, you, were you surprised by that to see Kobe Covington way up as backup fighter? No, no, I, I was actually glad was, to see that. I was. <laughs> I was. Well, I was. You asked me, was I surprised by it? I wasn't surprised yeah. by it. No, I wasn't surprised. I, one thing, uh, another thing, I'll give Kobe his flowers for is he's always on point with the weight cut. He's always ready to go when he when he actually wants that matchup. He's never missed weight. He's never, as far as being a professional is concerned, he's he's on the ball. So if if me being surprised by it, no, Kobe's he's not gonna miss weight. He's not gonna um, miss an opportunity to compete for a world championship. So um, I think he deserves it from that standpoint for sure. Did he, does he get a push? Absolutely. Does he deserve a push? Absolutely. Because I mean, he brings eyes to the sport. He brings the pay per view buys. Uh, casuals, people who want to see him. And then one factor that we definitely dismiss, I, I, we haven't talked about to my knowledge, is Kobe has a big American fan base. So, like, if you want an American representative of cha- as champion, it's hard to look elsewhere because we have American champions right now and they don't get the same backing. Al yeah. Jermaine doesn't get the same backing as Kobe would ever get. Only guy who the, yeah. only guy who the only guy who does is John Jones, and the dude, the guy hasn't lost a fight in his career. Even the fights that he was close in, people are more willing to criticize him for his close wins than they are to criticize Kobe for his obvious losses. It's like he he has the support already, of a yeah. fan base, a big fan base. Well, the Jorge, so, the Jorge uh, Kobe fight did three million more. Than the previous fight, which was Whitaker and Izzy for a champion, it was no belt on the line, but it did way more numbers just because he has that loyal fan base. Also, that's a that's a big rivalry fight. They guess two guys from the same gym who talk, who both are capable of creating buzz with sound bites, or he yeah. can create buzz with sound yeah. bites, or we can create buzz with sound bites, and those things are big factors, man. When it comes to when it comes to the casual fan, the guy who isn't breaking down metrics, they care more about that. Like, that's a big deal. And those are people buying the pay-per-views. I mean, yeah. like, those are the guys who are actually spending their money on the fight. Casual people, are, that's the guys you're targeting. And Kobe's got that. He figured, he, he knows that. And he's able to play into it. So, um, like, um, if you want to go like, Apples, I'm sorry, all cards on the table, that makes the most sense to me, having Kobe and Leon. The, the path that it took to get there, questionable. However, the fight makes sense from yeah. a business standpoint. I, I agree 100%. All I know is I'm uh, going with USA. <clears throat> so if Kobe's a representative for that fight, then that's what I got to go with. Always, I go country. I go my country over any country. Always, I think that Kobe has the edge in this fight as well. Like I think if this fight happens, this is Kobe's best path currently to be becoming the UFC undisputed UFC champion. Um, Leon Edwards is in, immensely skilled. He's one of the smoothest guys uh, in striking in the 170 pound division. I think he. I think he can beat anybody. The division on any given day. However, I think that in this matchup specifically, like we say, styles make fights. I think this style favors Kobe Covington. The, the, the pace that the fight will take place, the um, style that Kobe implores, the fact that he's had time off to get healthy and be ready for this fight. Inactivity. I don't think inactivity is a um, a detriment for fighters. You get time to get healthy. You're not banging around and coming into the fight with a lingering in- injury. I think uh, Obi, this is his best shot. So, yeah. 
for me, I can see why Leon doesn't want it. Because it, it this is the biggest chance for him to get dethroned. In my mind, I know if I'm thinking it, I know he might be. I mean, I'm not the guy competing. I'm just looking at it from a um, on paper. So, and it looks bad that he's making excuses to not fight Colby, but also dangling Jorge. It, it makes him look like he's scared and duck. It well, he he know. I think he knows the truth, and he knows that this is a tough matchup for him. Whereas, I Jorge is not. However, is Jorge a big payday? Absolutely. He's a championship side. He's a championship side going up against a rival guy who has a built-in storyline. So that's a big payday. So if you ask me on paper, if I was just Leon's in Leon's management, right? Let's say I'm I'm on Leon's side, which fight makes the most sense for my fighter? Of course, is Jorge Masvidal, not uh, not Kobe Covington. But if you're looking at it from a competition standpoint, it's obviously Kobe Covington. And not never Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal, I told you how I feel about him as a, a championship fighter, championship level fighter. I don't think he beats anybody in the top five. Oh, and you said that you, you mentioned Gaethje earlier. I was I wasn't on the um, pod. I, I had the audio, and I heard you mention Gaethje as being that gatekeeper, where like if you beat Gaethje, you're in line now for number one contendership status or fighting for the title. I think. Um, Jorge falls into that plane as the 170 guy. You think yeah. uh, Jorge is the gatekeeper? For 170? Absolutely. Damn, so Gilbert Burns probably got like his eyes locked in on that one. Absolutely. Gilbert knows this is a big opportunity for him to be able to get back into the title contention for sure. Before yeah, it was so like Wonder Boy. Um... I, I, well, I voiced my opinion on that. What do you guys think? I, I think I don't think uh, Jorge can be anybody in the top five. I mean, the fight, man. So anything's possible. Of course, Jorge can beat anybody. I just don't think he would be a favorite. Hold up, hold up. Let's let's look at the history. History does not lie. When we look at things, right? You guys remember that one time when Michael Bisbing became the champion, right? He beat yeah. Luke Rocco, yes. right? He knocked him out. Clean as day. Right. Who did he Larry. defend the title against? Dan Henderson. Old man Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson was a guy who wasn't championship caliber fighter at that point in his career. Hell Dan no. Is an abs- Dan is an absolute legend. Monster, in the sport. though. Absolute but legend in the sport. But at no that doubt. point in time, he was probably like ranked. Out of the top 10. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To be fighting for a title. And he fought for a title. Am I right? I think that's what Leon's feeling. He's like, okay, well, how come all these other champions... <laughs> yes. He getting to have some say-so yes. in the... They have, they have some say-so in who they defend against. Yes. So and what I'm thinking... And I, don't, and I don't get that opportunity when I earned it the hard way. What I'm thinking here is if Masvidal wins somehow... Right, he will definitely fight for the title if, only if, Leon Edwards is the champion. Mm, I can see that for sure. If he beats Kobe, whenever they fight, if it's International Fight Week, which would be fantastic because we need a USA representative going against international waters. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because even if we get John Jones against Stipe, yeah, that's going to be a great fight. That's going to be like, okay, best heavyweights ever currently. Because that's if that, if that fight can come to fruition, I'm talking about the best UFC heavyweight of all time in Stipe Miocic. He has the most Best title heavyweight, defenses. exactly. Most title defenses in heavyweight history. Right? Even though he's 40, even though he has recently come off a brutal knockout to the um, actual champion in Francis Ngannou. Francis is, Francis is no longer with the company, so we're going to skip over that. But John Jones completely dismantled, quickly, the number one guy in Cyril Gan. He made it look like walk in the park and erased all these John Jones' washed rumors. So now John Jones looks like the scariest man on the planet. 
in the heavyweight division. So you got a monster in John Jones going up against the the guy who has all the accolades. Heavyweight. That would be a the that's automatically the biggest fight possible. Next thing is Kobe versus Leon. And let's say Leon does pull off this fight. Let's say Leon comes out there and classes Kobe, right? Beats him handily. Now we're talking about a guy in Leon who hasn't lost a fight since what, twenty sixteen? He, he's beaten, been winning. He's been winning. He, he went. He went two and zero versus the pound for pound one of the pound for pound uh, number one guys in Kamaru Usman, and didn't beat Kobe. Now where does Leon rank? That one seventy pound division is so. When he has shop so cuts, much. Right? I'm just saying, like as far as pound for pound is concerned, if no, no, Leon no, 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 were no. to if, if Leon were to come out there and. Just say, like, I think Kobe has the edge. I think Kobe would be the matchup favorite in my mind. But let's say I'm wrong. Let's say Leon comes out there, dismantles Kobe. What's the buzz around Leon now? Because he's now the undisputed champion already by beating by beating uh, Kamaru in London. If he comes out and defends his title against Kobe and looks really impressive, how would, what, what are we saying about Leon now? Is he a bona fide star in the sport? Styles make fights. He's got to be like four more people before he's like dominant. <laughs> really? Four more? Four more. Four more. Are there even four more guys? It's all styles, man. All styles. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like, okay, the Kobe's one. I guess you could say Blah Muhammad was is B2. Earns three and then uh Shavkat four. No, there's always a random guy. That's what, that's why I say four. Okay. I didn't I didn't leave it with three as a odd number. There's always a fourth. Okay. That's the last one. Once he does, he accomplishes that one, the the up and comer that nobody saw coming, then yeah, he got it. It possibly be Jack a, De La Madalena, dude. JDM. It possibly be a guy like Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal put string together some wins and then get closer. See, I mean, his stock didn't drop after that Shavkat fight. In fact, Shavkat. Jeff Neal fight posed more questions than answers. But that's the thing with the welterweight division, though, is, like, them boys don't fight each other for, like, a while. Like, even if we get a title fight, even if Leon Edwards fights July, then miraculously December, we still got, how many I said? Five, right? Four? He still got two more people to fight. Because you got the black horse or the black sheep, whatever you want to call it, and then the other contender that's out there that everybody else feels should have fought, right? Mm. You got the, the underground king that's on the come up, and then you got the guy that everybody else says, Oh yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get him. Mm. Like 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 right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Welcome Mark, welcome. <laughs> Marky G. Yes, back sir. Off. Welcome back. Like straight up in welterweight. How long have we been talking about that, though? We've been talking about uh, this for years. Them years. boys don't fight each other. It's, I don't know if it's them boys don't fight each other, but it's been incentivized to not. Cause the matchups have results. not been there, though. Like, okay, how long has Bilal, Kobe, has Bilal ever fought? For instance, this dude's not even top five no more. Has he fought Jorge? No. Has he fought Gilbert Burns? No. He's against him now. He's fought, he fought the champ. He's fought everybody else. It's like he was the, I'm not going to say gatekeeper because we all know what a gatekeeper is. He's been the guy that's been like just fucking stiff arming everybody else from the top five. Like uh, Luke A. Mm-hmm. And then, well, him and Wonder Boy was in the top five. And he, he did <clears throat> like a, a a hurdle over him, even though that fight wasn't that great. But then you got uh, Kevin Holland, who should be at 170. And he had a great fight with Wonder Boy, but I believe Wonder Boy won that one, right? Right? Oh, yeah. Then he he got steamrolled by Hamza. No, I think I yeah. think that was after. I think he won the... Uh, no, he lost the Oh, yeah, the it Wonder was Boy after. Fight. It yeah. was after. No, nah, Hamza. Yeah, he got the Wonder Boy after Hamza. He that Boy is after Hamza. a variable that should not be glossed over this guy if he doesn't make weight for his fight is probably gonna be swept under the rug just like exactly. before 
what you say you saying Hamzat? Yeah, yeah. Hamza. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I don't think he's much. He's not in the the one seventy talk. But if you're going to talk about Kevin Holland, who um is a legit one seventy tender, he got beat by Wonder Boy and Hamza, and beat handily by Hamza at one seventy. So it's, it's going to take away. It, it takes away a little. It takes away his buzz. No, nah, I think they fought one eighty five. Wasn't it, wasn't it one of those um, short notice type things? Yeah, wait. Yes, it was a short notice. Right. Yeah, it was short but it's, it's a short notice deal, and Kevin Holland is traditionally an 85, and that's most of his career has been spent at 85. However, he's in the 170 division. That's, that's what I'm saying, just for the namesake. And you know if you just you quick Google search, you see 170, 170, even though you know that that was a catch <clears> fight. Um, But that takes me back to... Just to bring it back full circle, you have current champion in Leon, and then a bunch of question marks. And the only clear cut that we have is Kobe. So whether Kamaru Usman gets, um, I mean, where are you going to rank Kamaru now? You can't. I don't think he can fall too far below one. I mean, he <clears> basically <throat> basically yeah, just lost. A- What's up? It's going to be like two or three at two at the least. Or yeah, I mean, or whatever. Yeah. Talk about a, a guy who was a longtime champion and just lost to a guy who was a long, who has a long winning streak. It's not really a detriment to Kamaru. He lost a decision versus the current champion. And Kobe lost two fights to Kamaru and was still ranked number one. So how would without being champion? So how would then Kamaru fall below one after losing two fights as the champion? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Won. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. One second. I want to welcome Marky G for joining us today. He just showed up to the pod. Welcome, Mark Mark. Marky G. <coughs> Cheers. <laughs> We got the whole crew here right now. We got Brian W. We got C4 Chris, Casual Chris. We got Marky G and Johnny Dubs and me, Mosey P. We're in here live. Finally, it's been a long time coming. (laughs) We might not have got the right times together, but we're all here together. Finally. Family's back, baby. Oh, yeah. Alright, so as you were, I don't know where you guys were. I just hopped in and just had to say that. So we spent you, we spent a lot of go. time talking about the 170 division. Basically, um the, the, the next matchups and um what this now 170 landscape looks like with Kamaro being dethroned and being replaced by Leon Edwards. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, um, do you guys feel like Leon was Leon Edwards is going to be as dominant as Kamaru? Is he going to be the next? No. Welterweight King. Oh, oh shit! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who was that? Who was that? John? That was John with the wait, wait, wait. no. <laughs> that was John with the I'm no. Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes. I think he has a chance to. However. Um, I want to hear the arguments for no. Hold on, can can, can I go? Can I go first? Can I go first, please? Can I go first, please? Me, no. I don't feel he will be as dominant because I'm still looking for the next Anderson Silva coming. Like, I'm waiting for that guy. I truly am waiting for the guy that's going to finish every single fight in a title fight that he gets into. And Leon, Leon Edwards... I believe he has the skills to do something like that, but I don't see it. I really don't see it. You know why? That guy? You know why? No, you know why, John? Why? Because he lost to Nate Diaz. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm joking. I'm I'm still really looking forward to that, but I have yet to see somebody because everybody right now in every division besides... John Jones's division, because we haven't seen somebody fight him and prove otherwise. 
besides uh the only person i think that we'll, we'll get to that another day i'm i'm getting ahead of myself right now in all these divisions the only people that might have a problem is the bantamweight title with mirab and Algermain and they train together that's the only division i feel that has problems with a uh, actual contender taking the title from them and running with it from there currently right now that's how i feel um john give me your your no why leon <coughs> won't be uh, um so no, i think shotcott is a real danger after he gets a few more fights um, and I don't think Leon is getting past Colby. I think that is just a hard wall. However, if he were to get over that wall, yeah, he might have a, a decent chance of having time, but I just, I do not see him getting through Shavkat and Colby unscathed. Like, I think those are two hard checks against him. Okay. I, I can see that too. I guess that's a decent, that's a legitimate um, reason for why because, not. Like as soon as he gets a five, like a full five round fight, and we'll we'll see how he he does, right? Because he, but he's always finished every fight, and I think he said something about like he's never going to leave it in the hands of judges. Like he just doesn't feel like he wants to end it on his own terms. So if he can prove he has a gas tank as well, oh, that's real bad. That's bad for Colby and Leon. Well, I, 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 I would if, if I were Kobe and Leon, I would be I would be feeling fine with that because he had the matchup edge versus Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal is a shorter, uh, more stockier, broad style, um, 170, whereas Shavkat is a more uh, taller, longer, linkier. <laughs> Linear striker, like he's throwing straight punches, and he has power in those straight punches. He has the, he had the edge in that fight, and that was only three rounds, and he wilted in the third. So you you're telling me that he's gonna be able to make a 180 improvement in five rounds versus the best guys in the division? You got to show me that before I can even uh, put that to paper. Right, and that's what I'm saying. It's just the hypothetical. We will Correct. see how he does, but the fact that he's already been like trying to nail every fight he does, he's got solid everything. So he just needs a little bit more seasoning. No, as a as a prospect, he is the guy. Yeah, as a, as a, he has all the potential in the world. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a reason why Leon won't continue to make this uh, title, keep this title run, and and uh, maintain the one hundred and seventy pound strap? Else? Okay, well, o says no. John says no. Whoa, Mark, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Oh, what's up with it? Even though he beat Usman, I still have to see it. I still have to see it. He has to prove to me one more time against an actual contender. Just because you might have the blueprint against somebody. Because you, you Ooh, Edwards. Yeah, you can't tell me. You can't tell me like. The last fight beforehand, he was winning that fight. He had one advantage in this fight, and it was the potential head kick. The potential KO shot that he had <laughs> on him. And I feel that really, really, really dwelled hard on Usman. Given I'm not taking no nothing away from his performance of the fight but yeah he did kick him in the nuts a few times he did grab the cage he did put his fingers in the gloves but other than that he did prove that you can't just take him down easily and he tore up them legs he made them look like literally minced meat he was ki killing them legs but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I think Usman might. We might see a fourth fight with them in two years from now. You never know. Unless Usman. How how old is he? 32? 33? Usman? Yeah. Usman? 
But them knees are like 45. How how old is he? <laughs> you know what I'm Bro, saying? How old he got, is he? He got, he got them D1 He's 35. He He's 35. Oh. Yeah, Usman's older than you think. He's in his Usman, prime right now. Oh, oh my Usman, God. But he, he might be physically in his prime, but Usman got them D1 running back knees. <laughs> he been yeah. running all his life. <laughs> That's what you're telling me? <laughs> they, they've knees, been taking knees. shots. Bro, <laughs> that's going to be a tough thing to overcome. Mark, be in on this 170. Leon Edwards, to me, has been dominating this division. Maybe not in the most spectacular fashion, but he's been dominating this division for a while. I don't see why he can't go on a spectacular run. Uh, to me, if you can beat Usman, even if it's by a close decision, you can beat Kobe. Uh, Shavkat, that's, that's a true test right there, but I'm on the other fence on that. I think Shavkat needs to show me a little bit more with, like, legit contenders before I'm going to be like, oh, he's going to run through Leon. Because I feel like he was exposed in his last fight Absolutely. with Jeff Neal. And I love Jeff Neal, but Absolutely. that should have been a, I'm going to walk through him and start fighting the top, top three. But that's where we're at. So I think that Leon has all the potential for it. It won't be no Anderson Silva run where he's going to be, like, lighting up the world. But I think I think he could get three, four defenses if he really wanted to. Oh, well, at, well with three or four defenses, that is a silver type run. And let's not forget, first of all, Anderson Silva's one of a kind. We can't yes. we can't make that the new metric of being of being great because you're asking a lot from the deck. Anderson Silva, outside of Talis Lightus and um, who was the other guy, the Canadian guy that he fought that went to a decision? He it was um, I'm losing his name right now. Travis Luter? No, 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 not Luter. He finished him. He finished Luter. He finished Luter with the triangle, mm -hmm. triangle elbows. Yeah. No, no, no. It was the uh, the God, with Patrick Cote. Hold oh, on. Yeah. Outside of, Co outside that, of Cote, did not, that did not go to decision. That man did cannot. It. Well, Cote's knee, Cote's knee yes. went out right. The only reason why I know that is because uh, my wife likes Patrick Court Cote. How could you not like? How could Corte? you not like the predator? How could you not? He like went to decision with uh, Damian Maya, right? Maya. It was Maya Lightus, yeah. and then he had the snooze fest against Nick Diaz. That's when uh, Nick said, "Hi." Huh? Nick Diaz went to sleep. Right. But outside <laughs> of those three fights, everything else um, was brilliant. Like I mean, it looked good. But when you're fighting the best guys, you're the, when you're at the top of the mountain, and I said this before with even Jones, when you're at the top of the mountain, you're getting everybody's absolute best. They're, they're fighting the best guy in the division, um, notably, for the belt, five rounds, and they're get, you're getting the best effort from every single guy you compete against. So to me, it's not a, a knock on a guy who has a uh, who is the champion who – skates by and gets a win against these top tending hungry lions and people look for reasons to discredit that as opposed to giving them more respect for that i mean this it's a tough it's a tough it's tough to stay on top you've seen it with every division division champions when they keep changing the guard i mean if it were a breeze we'd see more long tenure champions and that's why i think kamaru was getting so much credit for lapping the division because he's fighting the best of the best every single time he's getting in a cage once he's champion. He's fighting mm -hmm. the top contending guys and he was able to beat them over and over. He, he pushed back Gilbert. He pushed back Kobe twice. He, he Masvidal twice, even though it's controversial whether or not Masvidal deserved it. He, he's beating these guys over and over again and building this long title contending, title defending win streak. Anderson Silva is a different animal. I don't think we. I don't think we're going to see that anymore with the evolution of the sport. The sport's to the point now where even the up and comers don't have glaring weaknesses, except except for the obvious specialist guys like Bo Nickel, who had who are he's obviously a grappler. You have guys um, who have just one skill set that's an ace. 
Hold up. One skill set that's dominant. Hold up. Hold up. You see, most most hold of the up. contending guys, they have. Hold um, up. They're more they're more well rounded. As much as I want you to talk <clears throat> about that, I feel we can go talk about that on another pod, because this new generation, they're all good on all aspects. Like literally, it's no longer the. Uh, I'm very good at this point. And I'm all right at this point to keep me going to where you can't beat me. Nowadays, it's like everybody is so good at everything. And it's crazy. Like this new generation. So. Maybe. I mean, mostly. Oh, maybe. Because look at the current landscape. Got Alex Pereira, who is obviously a kickboxing specialist. Matchup. He dethroned. He dethroned Izzy. Match and up. We're gonna get that title. We're gonna get that title fight back. Obviously, we're gonna see that again. Two weeks. But he dethroned Izzy in the exact same fashion that he did in kickboxing. No, he didn't. No, he, he, no, he, he didn't. Like, so no, he didn't. That the question comes into will will he be able to be as dominant as Izzy was against the other guys that Izzy was beating? John, and John, John, that. save that energy. Save that energy for the next All one, right, John. We, Save yeah, that we, energy, we won't, John. We won't, we won't, I don't want to dig deep on this, but I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go over a few prospects that we say, oh. we say this is a new era of everybody being balanced. Bo Bo's not balanced. Bo is a obvious grappler, obvious ace in the hole grappler who's got that. Oh, we know his wrestling is great. His wrestling is uh, level ten. Wrestling, He's ten. Right? And then ten out of ten. Pereira, Alex, what's Alex Pereira's stand up? Ten out of ten. You're right. absolutely so, right. And these are these are these are part of the new crop. This, this isn't like long tenured guys. These are guys who are they new. They're new to the sport of MMA, regardless of their okay. previous. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. They're new to the sport of MMA, and they're using their ace in the hole to get to um, get notoriety. And right now, Pereira's champion. Uh, Alex is the champion. Now, per this Bo, conversation, Bo all, per this conversation, I'll take Bo over Pereira. Sure. I think Bo can take him down at will. But Absolutely. Bo's not in line, for, Bo's not in Wait, line yet. He's not in line, here, he's not in line one yet. time, he's dead. Yeah, but, and then that's, okay, that's, 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 that's the obvious. Um, it's here and there for this pod. Oh, my God. We could go on for another two hours if sure. we go. And, but we, we, won't, we won't speculate that far out because that's, that's way far out. But let's go to like what we have in front of us, right? We mentioned the bantamweight division where Mirab would is not fighting Aljo. He said it. Aljo said it. However, Aljo's fighting Cejudo, right? Yeah. And if Aljo beats Cejudo, he has he can make a case for being one of the best bantamweights of all time. If he beats Cejudo, and then the next thing for him is moving up. I think it, for him, if he does beat Cejudo, the only other contenders left for him is O'Malley and his friend. Hey, uh, who's so, available tomorrow for a podcast? Just throwing us out there the tomorrow. Pod. Everybody's available tomorrow. John, you available? Yeah. After what? Uh, four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I do, do want to get. I Tuesday do. Edition. I do want to get in a yes a taco Tuesday. Definitely want to talk about some tacos tomorrow on a Tuesday. I definitely do want to hit up on that one because that. That's very intriguing. Like, what happens? Oh, we, we This thing's been going for as long as it's been going, and we haven't even mentioned the change of guard. It has been happening. In, in it the, has been the, happening. In the, women's, in the women's division. Oh, Lord. Uh, Don't even get me started. Alexa, right. Alexa just uh, took, took care of business against Valentina, and we haven't even mentioned that yet. So we can definitely get all of that t- taken care of tomorrow. I don't want to leave this one without talking about the potential for Ojo moving up and Mirab now competing for the Bantamweight title. Because I think if, if what happens, if Aljo beats Suhudo, let's say Aljo goes out there and submits Suhudo, right? If. And then. If. This is, this this is, is like, we, this is like this 25 is I's and like 32 F's. For this, it, do you, you think it's wait wait do you do you think it's far out of the realm of possibility? I won't say far, but how far? I do how, have Cejudo in this one. Are you asking? Okay. Like you so say far, say, like okay, how many miles? Cejudo, 
Let's say Cejudo wins. Is Aljo getting an immediate rematch? N- hold on. Probably wait. not. If Cejudo not? wins, no. If Cejudo wins, no. Aljo so would who, not get. So, who gets uh, okay, so if, if uh, Sean does, O'Malley if gets does. next shot? Right. Exactly. No matter so, what. No matter what. what who what wins? What happens to Mirab then? What happens to Mirab then? Mirab will. F- fuck. He is yes. fucked. <laughs> That's all I can say. Saying. He's fucked. Thanks to. You. You see where I'm going with this? I'm like, if, if oh my god, hey, 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 Aljo loses, gentlemen, that makes way more questions than answers. Gentlemen, we are reaching the two hour point almost. I've been here five minutes. What you talking about? <laughs> but tomorrow, we can elaborate on this more if you guys are ready and available. Absolutely. I, I, I will be available. We can continue. We will call this whatever episode this is. We will call it part one, and tomorrow will be part two. Sounds good to me. Okay. So, with that note, it's uh, zip it up and zip it out. But, see you tomorrow for part two. Absolutely. We'll be back. Peace out, guys. Break time. <laughs>